Hello there. In the last video, we talked about the details and the steps that we took uh, to make this oval. And now we're going to talk a little bit about how we can make it look a little bit nicer, make it look a little bit more real, kind of like it's uh, popping out uh, from the image a little bit, make it look a little bit less flat. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start by actually deleting our original oval. So go ahead and select your layer that the oval is on and hit delete. And in the video I talked about how uh, we can make a perfect circle uh, or, or you didn't have to. And we didn't in the past examples, uh, but now we are. We're going to make a perfect circle. And instead of trying to guess and just try and get it right, Photoshop makes it very easy for you. Uh, let's just make sure that we have our elliptical marquee tool selected. Let's get our crosshairs back on the image and let's go ahead and click on our mouse. And while you're doing that, instead of just dragging across, actually hold down the shift key as well. And now begin to drag across and you'll see that your circle keeps its proportion. And it is a perfect circle. So, Photoshop has made it very easy for us to make perfectly uh, proportional objects. So, uh, let's go ahead and fill this in with a color. We're going to use the blue from last time, so go ahead and make a new layer. And let's go ahead and use blue. We'll use the paint bucket tool again. And let's fill it in. And let's go ahead and hit Command or Control D to deselect our circle. All right, very cool. Uh, now we have a blue perfect circle. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit with our move tool by hitting V. Now, I'm going to bring in a new concept. And if you'll notice up here, I have uh, what looks like a standard ruler. And also on the sides, I'm sorry, my toolbar is hiding it a little bit there. You can see a little bit uh, better there. Now, these rulers are very important uh, because Again, there's a there, there's a lot of human errors that we make, uh, you know, just just from us being human and being so imperfect. And so, what Photoshop does is, uh, you know, with prints like this, you kind of need to be perfect. You know, if if something looks a little bit off center, kind of like this is, I know it's a little bit closer to this side uh, than it should be. But I, you know, I'm not that good at making it perfect myself. Maybe you are, but that's pretty rare. So Photoshop makes it very easy for us by having these rulers. Now, you might not have these rulers on your screen, uh, but they're pretty easy to to uh, get on there. Just go ahead and go to View and go ahead and click rulers or as you can see the key command is command R and so just to make it very easy to show those when you do and when you don't need it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and use these rulers to make our circle in a uh, the perfect center of our canvas here. So in, in order to do this let, let's think for a second we have two objects we have two layers on our uh, on our workspace here we have this circle and we have this background. Now if we think about it this circle also has a center and it's right here. This is the perfect center of this circle. Now we don't, we, we could grab our ruler and drag it across and put it on the on the center of the circle and we could say okay well that's the center. No, that is not the center because our circle isn't in the center for one. So what I would recommend to get the perfect center of your workspace is go ahead and hide the circle and so just that it won't be visible anymore and go ahead and select your very base background layer. And then what we're going to do is you're going to go over to your ruler and I'll just start with the left. You can start with the top if you want. And I'm going to click down on the ruler and just start dragging across. Now I'm not sure if this is defaulted or not, but okay, there it was. You'll notice that I'm dragging my ruler across and you'll see that it kind of, it snaps right there. That point to where it snaps is the direct middle of uh, the vertical part of your background. And as soon as you let go, it'll make this straight line. Now, if you work with a lot of uh, dark graphics, you can actually change the color of this. You can actually uh, do a lot of different things with the way that your ruler comes up so you can make it look better for what you do. Now we're going to do the exact same thing coming from the horizontal. So go ahead and click at the top of your ruler down there. Drag it down until it snaps right in and go ahead and let go. 
This is the perfect center of your image. And I use this quite a bit to be sure that I'm using the perfect center of all my images and uh, my shapes and, and all the things that I use to make my graphics. Now let's go ahead and bring our circle back in and let's click on that layer and you can see with, by the look of these crosshairs we were off by quite a bit. Uh, we were not in the perfect circle. So here's uh, the, the perfect center, excuse me. So here's what we're going to do to get it right. So go ahead and get on your move tool or hit V. Go ahead and click on it and you know we can move it around and Photoshop makes it even easier to get it in the center. So let's say you're kind of out here, that's where you made it, and go ahead and start bringing it down oh, until it kind of snaps in there. It's going to kind of shut in there. Now you're on the perfect horizontal line. Uh, and you can't see it because the crosshairs are hidden, but uh, I'll just let go of it and you can see that we are right on that horizontal line. So now let's go ahead and bring it over uh, right there uh, to the very center and let's just drag it over and it'll stay on that horizontal line unless you move it too much and it's snapped to the center as well. And if you look at it, you can see that our crosshairs are right on the center of our line. So our circle is in the very center of our image here. So now we're going to do a little bit of cosmetic changes to the circle. And uh, what I like to do whenever I'm making cosmetic changes is just get rid of those ruler marks. Now instead of uh, clicking them and dragging them off again, I want to keep it perfectly center and I want to make it quick. And the quickest way to do that is to hit Command and the colon key. And that will get rid of... Uh, the, the ruler lines. Now if you hit command and that same key again it'll bring them right back. So if you were just going back and forth and you needed to check and be sure that you were in the center, if you were moving a bunch of different shapes or objects you could just do that real quick instead of having to go drag them again. So you'll hit uh, the command colon key to get rid of that. Now that we have our circle in the exact in, uh, the exact center, let's take a look at some cosmetic things that we can do to it. Now there's a lot of cosmetic things that you can do, uh, almost unlimited. But what we're going to talk about today is actually called blending uh, options. And so we're going to click on our layer one, and we're going to right click right on the layer, and you're going to see uh, there's layer properties and then there's blending options. So go ahead and click blending options and this is going to bring up a new window of all sorts of different layer styles that you can do. Now this layer style, uh, if you think about it, is specific to the layer that you're on. So this will not affect, let's say you have five layers of circles. This will only affect the layer that you have selected. So if you were to say, okay, I want to drop shadow it will only affect the layer that you've selected. It will not do all five. And there is a way to get them all quickly done if you wanted the same shadow for everything. Um, but we'll get to that a little later. So let me try and get this out of the way a little bit here. Um, okay, so there's quite a few different options here of things that you can do, but we're going to talk about one in particular, and that's going to be a simple drop shadow. Now, if you already noticed that you'll see that the circle does have a shadow behind it, which kind of makes it look like it popped out from the background a little bit, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and I use drop shadows quite a bit to make uh, text uh, look like it pops out a little bit more compared to just being on a flat image like it would look like in Word or something like that. Now, if you click on Drop Shadow, we were right here on the general uh, blending options. If you click on the Drop Shadow, you can see that we get even more options of things that we can do. You can change the blending mode, which is unimportant right now, uh, the opacity, which is uh, extremely important, and let me talk about the opacity very quick. Uh, the opacity is just how much uh, of what you're doing you want. Basically intensity. So let's say you were doing like an outer glow and uh, it was white and you could see an outer glow outside of your circle and you say, oh, that's way too much. I don't want that much. You will just turn the opacity down and that'll turn its overall intensity down a little bit. You can see we can also change the angle of where a shadow is coming from. So if you want, uh, let's say the light was coming from up here uh, or down here and the shadow was being created here. Let's say it was coming to the right. Uh, there's just so many options that you can do, but I'm going to go ahead and leave mine at 120 degrees. 
Um, you can change the distance of how far away it is from your circle. So you can make it uh, you know, nearly directly behind it or make it very far away. That's completely up to you. Uh, the spread is actually kind of how I would say like the thickness of your shadow. So if I were to put it in terms like that where I can understand it, then I would call it kind of the thickness of it. And it's done in percent, so that kind of makes sense as well. Now the size is also uh, an important one. The size is more uh, kind of how it's feathered and, and to explain feathered a little bit is kind of how soft it is on the edges. So let's go ahead and make it a little further away from the circle so you can see the detail a little bit more. Let's turn the size all the way down. Okay, you can see that almost, uh, that, that completely hardened the edge of our shadow. So it almost looks like a duplicate circle just gray under it. Uh, that's not normally ideal for a shadow, but it's there. So I like to give my shadow a little bit of feel to a little bit of feathering so that it looks a little bit softer and a little bit more like a shadow. And I'll go ahead and bring my distance back a little bit. And okay, so now it kind of looks like there's a shadow behind our circle. And if you want to take a look, let's say you were doing something very minimal and you could barely tell the difference. You can hit this uh, preview key right here and that'll show you uh, what it was before you started and what you did after any changes that you've made uh, with your layer style. So let's say you like that shadow and you say, okay, I'm good with that shadow. Okay, now you have a shadow on your circle. Now, let's say you were uh, doing it with a few other things and you wanted to check and be sure that that shadow worked with what the rest of what you were doing. Instead of having to right click, go to blending options, uh, and, and you know what, that wouldn't even work because if you, well, you know, if you were to go over here to drop shadow and select it and deselect it, you could see what you did before um, but you don't have to open the whole window to check it out. What you can do, if you remember our eyeballs uh, from seeing what was visible, uh, you'll notice that there's a few eyeballs on the effects that we just added. Um, now there's uh, a, the top section of the entire effects, and then you have your sub effects below that. So let's say that we added an outer glow under this drop shadow and we just wanted to see the drop shadow alone. Well, we would hit the eyeball that said outer glow and that would take away the outer glow from our image. And so if you wanted to preview what it looked like and let's, let's try it with our drop shadow here, you can unselect that drop shadow and see exactly what it's going to look like. And if you wanted to see your image without everything, and if there were more things down here, you would see how that would make sense. You can hit the general effects and that would get rid of everything. So this has been kind of a basic cosmetic lesson on things that you can do with shapes that you've created and uh, how to get things perfectly in the center to start organizing your images a little bit better. Uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, maybe some concerns, or uh, maybe, maybe you didn't completely understand what was going on, that's totally fine. I would be totally happy to answer your questions and... Uh, uh, we'll see you for the next video. Thank you.